Well, welcome to our healthcare panel tonight. We have uh, four panelists that I'd like to introduce to all of you. We have Angela Brown from Cassia. We have Rob Brock from Boston Scientific. We have Anila Adani from Habit Aware, and we've got Christy Moline from Bethel University. My name is Molly Wickham, and I'm going to be your moderator tonight. And we've got Judy Jones, who is here today as well, providing technical support. Um, you know, in our area, um, older adult services uh, hiring like crazy and is not changing anytime soon. Um, in the state of Minnesota alone, 60,000 Minnesotans will turn 65 this year and every single year after this until 2030. <laughs> so by the time we get out to that point, um, there will be almost half a million more seniors, older adults than there are now and there will actually be 20,000 fewer K through 12 students. So our society is really gonna shift. So our area of care for seniors and older adults is just gonna to continue to you know, just ramp up like crazy. It's gonna be very, very dynamic because I think the settings and the types of services and the demands and the technology are, is gonna have a growing impact. Um, so tons of opportunity there. Um, and frankly, a, an opportunity for overlap into multiple areas, because frankly, even if you don't get into caring directly for older adults, there's just going to be so many more of them that you're going to, you know, need those skills in some way, shape or form anyway. So uh, a great platform for that as well. Who's next? Hey, I forgot already. Uh, yeah, I think it's me. So at, at Boston Scientific, um, you know, last year when, when COVID first started restricting, um, causing hospitals to restrict elective procedures, some of the, some of our products are considered elective, some of them are considered essential, but it had a, it had a massive impact on the revenue streams for, um, for med tech companies across the board. So we had a, a hiring freeze in place for uh, much of last year, and yet, we still probably have easily more than 100 jobs that you can see at bostonscientific.com that are available at any point in time because there's constantly a need um, for certain roles and especially as, as we expand and um, you know different things. So I would say uh, what one thing that has changed since I started the company is that there's no separate list internally of jobs that are available and jobs that are outside. And I've seen that for, for most companies. I mean, um, and maybe I'd be interested to hear from Anila if it's different in the startup world, you know, but at Boston Scientific, everything's, the, I mean, the same list is available to everybody outside the company as it is to inside the company um, that's available on the, on the job boards online. So um, there are places available, but if you, if you know somebody, it can help you get an interview and that's important too. So there's not a hidden job market in the company, but it still helps to know somebody if, if there's an open position. Yeah, to leverage that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anila? Yes, for startup world, um, there are a few websites and news, sort of news websites, but also sh uh, have postings. Mini Inno is one of them and tech.mn is another where they share startup news. And that's where a lot of startups will post their openings. Uh, definitely not hundreds of listings available per company, but probably one or two, every company probably has one or two open. We're, we're looking right now for a data scientist to help us with some innovation um, on, the, on the technical side of our products um, and, and on other, other sort of uh, artificial intelligence, data science, those kinds of uh, roles. Um, but we don't have them public because sometimes it's just sometimes we'll just go straight through recruiters to help us find people um but i do know that startups do have will post on linkedin tech mn and many you know okay thank you christy i don't have much to add to this one except um that as uh, angelo was talking i I started just thinking about some of the programs at Bethel that that we talk about, and I think it's 
interesting to a lot of people as they start to consider what it means to have an aging population and a declining workforce. Um, what it means is that healthcare services are increasing in demand because as we age, we naturally consume more healthcare. But even within that segment of demand is senior living. So what, what I tell um, students all the time is as you're driving out of your neighborhood and you see that three-story building being built and you think it's an apartment, wait a couple months. When that brick uh, sign goes up, it's likely a senior living facility of some sort. Um, ding, 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 probably a really good place for jobs. In the, in, and as Angela said, 20, did you say 20? What was the year you said? 2030? 2030. 2030. Yeah. 2030. 2030. Mm -hmm. So not to take away from any of the others, I just think there's a particular interest because students are not aware, you know, they may hear about product companies, they know about some scientific, they might not know the startup space, but a lot of times people, students are just shocked at the career potential um, that exists in senior care just because of our demographic and our aging demographic. So that's what I have, Molly. Maybe just to interject with that too, that as we close off, I, I don't wanna speak for others, but I'm, I'm guessing the answer would be the same. You know, I would be more than happy to talk with people who may listen to this recorded version later on. So please don't hesitate to give out my name and email address. Um, you know, if people who hear this recorded version at a later date, you know, want to connect and have questions about, you know, the things that we talked about today. Yeah, is there one final wrap up thing each of you would like to say, like Angela just said, how about you, Rob? How do you want to close us out? Strings finder. I can't say that enough. <laughs> know yourself. Know yourself. Invest in your strengths. Okay. Thank you. Anila. What's your final word? Oh, final words, I think, is my new mantra, which is your pain is your purpose. So if you're in, have kind of an entrepreneurial spirit, I highly encourage you to turn to the pain that you may be running from because you're, you're probably not alone in it. And it could be something that helps not just you, but someone else too. Thank you. I had written that down. I hadn't heard that phrase before. Thank you so much. Christy? I don't want to put you on the spot. Sure. No, what I think what I would say is um, think broadly. Like, I think that's the thing that, you know, I, I think it was mentioned a couple of times and I, I see this particularly with 18 year olds coming into Bethel, but they think healthcare is doctors and nurses. And I think Anila said, you don't have to be a doctor or a nurse to really contribute to healthcare. So um, yeah, my closing thoughts would be just think broad, broader than you thought about healthcare because it is that big. <laughs>